Hey guys, before we jump into today's video, I want to remind everyone that we still currently have our very first giveaway running on our Facebook page, Double Sleeve. The link will be in the description below where you will find a pinned post on how to enter and possibly win your own Saiyan Showdown Premium Pack shipped anywhere in the world completely on us. We hope to see you enter, we hope that you win, and most of all, we hope that you enjoy today's video. Thank you so much. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Double Sleeved, and I am so excited to be back here recording content again for the channel. Uh, kind of missed it a little bit, I'm not going to lie. There was a, a bit of an MIA period where we were practicing for Nats and obviously playing Nats and then playing the side events and really just taking a rest from all that to, to kind of regroup, come back stronger, energized, and, you know, push out some more content to you guys. Um, so today I really want to go over the side event Unison Warrior only deck. Um, which I thought was a really, really fun type of event that, that was seen at Nats. I hope that they continue to bring that into future events, maybe some regionals, maybe some shop champ events. Um, I know we've kind of had draft events or pre-release events more so for these things, but I kind of hope they incorporate that going forward with maybe some new releases. Um, before we obviously get into the deck itself and things like that, uh, just an update. Uh, I came 32nd in oceania um unfortunately no top 16 finish for me i went x2 missed out on that top 16 by one loss um but it was a top eight only event itself to play in the second leg uh on the sunday for the finalist spot so not not too upset about it obviously i got to play in the side event instead which was quite a lot of fun um i ended up taking gogeta Zeno uh to both events actually and I wanted to go over today, I guess, my thoughts and my ideas and how I performed with Gogeta Zeno in a Unison Warrior only setting, based on obviously what we've seen these decks uh, perform with in in having the full arsenal of every card available. Um, so, yeah, I've got the deck in front of me. Uh, I've I've got the list here. Uh, on the Sunday itself, I went four one. Um, in the side event, placing fifth. Uh, just missed out, obviously, by one loss, but the person that I lost to won the whole event, so kudos to him. Um, the matchups that I actually came across, which you don't really realize that these cards were made in the Unison Warrior series and how dominant they were when they first released, um, was kind of crazy to me that I, that I would sit down and I'd see these decks and I would be like, wow, that, you know this only came out in, in this kind of series. So my first two matchups were actually Red Broly BR, uh, absolutely terrifying deck in a best of one. Managed to win both uh, by actually seeing this, this trusty girl here. This has saved me so many times. Uh, I, I can't put enough emphasis on how amazing this card is. I know we've all known about it. It's probably the most expensive SCR in the Saiyan Showdown uh, SCR slot, um, just being able to kind of play this on my on my third turn to stop my opponents who are playing Red Broly, being able to swing to crit my life when they go to the six drop and then being able to obviously warp cards from my hand and allow them to just pretty much finish the game. Unbelievable. Um, so MVP, I won both of those two games. My third game that I came across was actually a Icarus. Um, obviously a watered down version. It didn't obviously have a lot of the extra cards that were available to it. Um, it was running, actually, interestingly enough, it was running the green yellow package from the androids. Um, the trucker androids, I guess people would call it these days makes it easier for people to kind of understand, I guess, what kind of androids I'm mentioning. But yeah, had a lot of the Arrival stuff, um, which was a very, very close game as well. I managed to edge out that one. Uh, then we came into the fourth round, which was my only loss, uh, Green Turles. I played Green Turles when it first came out. The deck is amazing. The deck is super, super strong. Um, was running a bit of the yellow package as well from set 15. Um, 
very very strong deck yeah being able to obviously free play the combos uh being able to obviously have such a board presence um i know everything's kind of like the 3k combo power but it it didn't really matter um just having a blocker on the field being able to adjust your hand being able to you know play so many bodies that that kind of work from here and there and yeah the deck is absolutely insane um yeah i think i lost to like 90k or 100k double strike with obviously the fruit um uh, and then the last match that i went up against was also another green turtles which was running the same package uh but i managed to get out of that one because my opponent went for the same play the uh the double strike fruit uh, but I was man I managed to see my brainwash no more, um, which allows me to crit a life for one energy and only take one life instead of taking two, um, which in the end they had no no cards left in hand and I was able to go for game for my next turn. So yeah, good result in all honesty. Um, I really I really liked the side event itself. I thought it was I thought it was great. I would love to see more of it in in the future. I'm a very very big uh, draft fan. Um, I absolutely love drafting as well. I thought that the draft box and the the idea behind getting yourself in pods and and trying to figure out your best strategy was was super super fun as well. Um, but yeah, this this kind of uh, event, I do hope that it continues to go forward. Um, but we'll go over the deck itself. I mean, most people have already seen a generic Gogeta Zeno deck profile itself, so I don't want to go too much into detail. Um, with all the stock standard stuff, but I do want to go into obviously the changes that I had to make to make this deck viable and to make this deck a Unison Warrior deck only. Um, so you will probably already have seen some differences in in what you would stock standard see versus what you wouldn't. So I put these eight cards in the side deck at the bottom just to reference what I wasn't allowed to run, which what I would normally run uh, on the Saturday event or as a normal Gogeta Zeno deck. So. The Petrification, the Overwhelm Trunks, and the Super Kamehameha. Uh, very crucial to the deck itself. Very, very hard to play the deck without these. Obviously, being able to mill the Trunks and getting it to your hand and having an Overwhelm every turn to be able to put the Goku and Vegeta uh, Union pieces back into the Warper is very crucial. So I kind of tried to think to myself, what ways would I be able to obviously play around that um, and be able to kind of get them into the warp so I have the pieces uh, there to be able to kind of union fusion, you know, every turn or, or multiple times a turn, um, which I'll go over. Petrification, another very, very strong card, gets through barrier, um, allows you to stop pending autos as well if you use it on the card that is actually swinging and you choose that card, but it also stops two cards in its own tracks itself. Um, amazing in today's meta, obviously. Um, having a few of those is obviously very very crucial a lot of cards have barrier a lot of a lot of small weenies that actually have barry that make decks uh crucial uh to having those pieces on the board um such as like poutine and stuff like that as well um and then obviously super kamehameha obviously very very needed it's pretty much the only counterplay um that you do want to run in the gogeta, Z gogeta Zeno, um allowing you to kind of warp the card that is being played if it's a three or less if your life is at four or less as well and being able to take a life instead of using your energy for it too. Uh, so going on to the cards that I replaced these with in the deck, uh, a new one. I actually don't mind this card for black decks itself. Um, I found it even better to put in at the side event rather than the main event. Uh, it allows you to activate it with a counter attack if you've got a unison card in play. Gets through barrier again. If it's got 15k power or less, you can warp it. You can use it on the attacking card. Again, you can use it on those pesky cards that have barrier that like to sit on the field and don't like to to be moved. You know, they're they're very hard to get rid of. Um, the other effect with it as well, you can activate main or battle, limit one, of course. Choose up to one of your black leader cards or battle cards. It gets 15k power until the end of the battle or the end of the turn, whichever comes first. So it's still a 15k combo if you don't need to use the counter attack. So this will not neg cards 15k, this will just warp 15k power or less cards. So yeah, I found it really, really good in this deck specifically playing this format. Um, apart from that, of course, I needed to really up my count of Overrealm cards and up my count of uh, Union Fusion targets to make sure that I had that. So in total, I was running 10 Vegetas in total, Zeno. 
and I was running 10 Goku targets for Union Fusion. Um, so for those that don't know, Gogeta uh, leader thrives off Union Fusion because you get to draw every time you Union Fusion, um, and it needs the same power level Goku and Vegeta, and they can be used from your warp or hand um, when you're Union Fusioning. So very, very uh, important to have those pieces in the warp if you can, um, and the leader mills five straight to the warp itself. Um, yeah, normally you'd mill five. You'd hope to see, obviously, one of these trunks, which allows you to bring it to the hand. So at least that way you've got that overround ability once you've used your union um, to kind of recycle that. So without having that in there, I had to put more overrealm pieces in. We chucked in two Demigra. Um, some people were saying that it's probably good enough to have in the main board. I agree and I don't agree in the same spot. Uh, paying two for this is very, very expensive. The fact that it doesn't have barrier right now um is very hard to keep on board sometimes there's a lot of cars that get rid of stuff that don't have barrier um and yeah paying the two for it is obviously fine but it's the fact that it might not last after a turn when you'd rather pay one for thwarting the dark empire for example um that has you know a crazier effect but also you know it costs one less um and then you can kind of get that back or you can have multiple copies of it and you know you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to use those pieces for other cards in the deck itself as well. Um, so I've got eight copies of the 5k Gokus. I've got eight copies of the Vegeta. It's a given, obviously, because Vegeta Super Combo is a 5k as well. Um, but I also chucked in the Vegeta True Fighting Spirit. That kind of hurts blue players. Um, and then I chucked in the 30k Goku and Vegetas as well, which are also overround cards. So having two, four... Uh, six, seven, if I wanted to use the Brainwash No More, eight, nine Overrealm targets in total um, to allow me to obviously pick and choose how often I could Union Fusion and also, uh, you know, using the Goku to grab a target back from the warp if I was struggling to see my pieces or even thwarting was constantly being sent to the drop or the warp itself. Um, so I found a good balance there. I don't think I would really change any of those ratios. We've obviously got the stock standard uh, Supreme Kai 4 of that you can pretty much send it from your warp to the bottom of your deck to play a unison from the warp uh, or your hand if you don't have one in play with a marker on it. Mirror uh, won me a couple of games. The minus two activate battle for each card in your warp. This card gains 5k power for the battle. I mean, there was never a time that it was under 100k combo. Or well, not even combo, 100k power um, that I'd be swinging for game. Um, can't run Champers in it, so that was one refreshing thing that I guess, you know, you didn't have to worry about. You're at two life. You were kind of like, okay, you know, if are you really going to go for game here? You know, what could you possibly have unless you put Double Strike onto it? Which is why Turles was so strong. Um, you could put 20k Double Strike on any Turles card as long as you had a life flipped face up. Um, so one of the only ways to kind of like surprise... Uh, double strike, which obviously wasn't a surprise, but you know, it was just so strong to get 20k double strike on a leader. And the deck was still really, really good when it first came out. So, having the ability to play pretty much all those green cards uh, in Unison Warrior series itself was, was kind of crazy. So, yeah, um, really great deck choice for the Unison Warrior series. So I, I really can't be upset about that. There was Sin uh, Shenron in there as well, another great deck um, to run in there. I was thinking about. Um, King Cold, I know that deck is de definitely very, very strong. I think Green is a very, very strong contender in a format like this. I just didn't have the appropriate cards and the time to source them to actually run it, so I tried to make do with what I had um, on me to run the side event itself. Um, so, yeah, obviously not being able to have, you know, Petrification Negates, I decided to put Playtimes over in. Um, so it's kind of a better power burst. I know it doesn't have the sparking, and some will probably fight me on that. Um, but you can negate the attack and you can play one black battle card with an energy cost of one from your drop area with its skills negated for the turn. So this was good to kind of get my Goku True Fighting Spirit back on the board. Sure, it doesn't activate on that turn, um, but being able to kind of have that card on the field ready for next turn, even, even playing the double strike, um, you know, being able to obviously give that 15k, well, to give it an extra 10k with my leader ability if I wanted to, um, and just have that double strike on the board, I, I felt it was a good choice. Or even use it for the 5k combo on the next swing, if I wasn't interested in keeping the one drops on the board. I thought it was definitely a great choice. Um, 
Secret Identity Marseillean. I know a lot of people had that in the sideboard. Again, I chucked it into the main board now, um, only because I felt like it was good to get removal on the board as well. I also needed another Overrealm target to make sure that I could kind of deal with the, the wide boards. And again, I went against two Turtles. I went against Red Broly BR twice. So, and Icarus, obviously. Um, so, yeah, being able to obviously remove some cards, I think it was definitely a great choice for myself. Uh, Supreme Kai of Time, everyone knows, um, you know, pretty much what it does. You're able to play it for one if you've got three cards in your warp. The leader pretty much has that on turn one. You'll be able to play the card and warp another card while you stop the card's attack currently, and it will come back at the end of the turn with its skills negated. Um, absolutely crazy uh, card in itself. I think it works perfectly in the deck. Uh, I chucked it to four just so I could have six negates uh, in total. Uh, I think that was probably enough. I, I really don't think I would change too much um, in this deck. Again, it was kind of like that deck that, you know, not many people obviously decided to run. I think it was, I think it was still very, very strong. Obviously the results speak for itself. Um, but yeah, um, still very, very happy and satisfied with my placement. Still very satisfied with the event itself. This is just kind of giving you an idea what it would look like um, if you weren't to obviously run it at its full capacity. I still think it's very solid. Um, obviously, it's not as top tier with having those in the side deck um, as you would having them in the main. But I just wanted to give a quick recap on how it looks. Um, you know, the fact that obviously I went 4-1 with it, um, the MVP of the event itself, which was the Pan SCR. Um, and yeah, how, how it was fun and hopefully that we can see that kind of going into the future and, and possibly growing from that event and maybe, yeah, maybe making it, uh, into, into later iterations of different, uh, sets and, you know, the, the overarching, um, series, I guess that they do down the track with, with Bandai. So yeah, that's it from me today. Nice, short and sweet kind of video. Um, if you have any questions or you have any ideas or maybe cards that you would change, um, I hope this kind of works well for you. I hope that it's maybe like even a skeleton build for yourself where you'll be able to kind of look at it and be like, oh yeah, I can build off this, or this is a good idea if my store decides to run one of these events, or if you are a store owner or, or an event, uh, organizer, you might think about, you know, running something like this. It definitely works a treat. I think it was super, super fun. Uh, and I hope to play it, uh, down the track again. So guys. If you've enjoyed today's video and you want to see more of these, give us a thumbs up. Um, it allows us to obviously see where the where the minds are at of our of our fans and what videos they want to see uh, come up more. We've got a lot more exciting content coming for you guys, so definitely stay tuned. Give us a sub if you haven't already. Check out our Facebook page and hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.